Yeah, you're right, bro. <laughs> Any Menudo fans out there? Right here, right here, sir. <laughs> Okay, guys, many longtime subscribers will recognize this room. It's my friend Doug's room in New Orleans, and we did the install of his MBL 101Es. That's a very fun video series, two day video series. Lots of fun things occurred. You guys might want to check that out. We came back for the REL 25 installation, had a bunch of people come over for that. That was a fun video series. But for those that are new or those that have been following along, let's talk about some of the changes he's had. I'll kind of do a little brief overview for those who haven't seen. He's actually got now MBL surrounds. These are different from the socks he had before. So now he has a 5.1 MBL with the rel as his sub, 0.1. Pretty amazing. This is a uh, Studer that's been restored fully and he's got some really cool tapes made a nice investment in tapes if you're gonna make an investment in tapes uh, budget about the amount of a new car just kidding actually but they could go for like 500 a piece it's a VPI Scoutmaster with a liar uh, Delios cartridge I believe Really cool. He's got an Aeon CD player. I frankly am not a fan of Aeon at all. Neither is he anymore, but this is some legacy um, gear that he had um, and he used it for his DAC for now. Um, a Lampazator supercomputer, which is what I used to use. This is a new piece. It's Steve McCormick's VRE2 it's a custom preamp that Steve did for Doug, both aesthetically, Doug was able to choose the uh, faceplate knobs, top cover, kind of like a sandwich Oreo color to kind of match the silver black theme he has going with most of his gear. Separate power supply, very high end, built to um, Steve and Doug's combined wishes on you know the accomplishments it could do with this gear and his matching smc audio amps and the mbls which require quite a bit of power as you'll notice in that video series i did in the past it even made some uh macintosh uh, 500 watt monos uh show their warning signs so uh He's got some other things to drive his rears. This uh, old Nakamichi uh, amp, and although I don't think he's using that one anymore. Um, and then a Lexicon uh, Pre Pro and an Oppo. He's got the DS speaker that we also, the one he had actually became defective. If you guys remember that video, the DS speaker, it's a product. Let me show you guys better. It's kind of like an easier imp to implement mini DSP SHD for just doing correction of mainly bass. Um, it's got more complicated things it can do, but um, MBL, the distrib distributor for MBL was using it with the um, MBL extremes in some cases when it goes into rooms that are difficult. 
And so we used it here in a whole video series. We talked about this with the REL25 and it actually worked very good in getting better results, but the one he had became defective and was doing some kind of noise. So uh, to their credit though, they just replaced the whole thing for him and he's got to put it back in now. He's got some old Acoustic Zen cables. And then like I showed, the video series of these beautiful MBL 101Es on Townsend stands. You rarely see that. Townsend stands, uh, I started my whole channel based on trying to duplicate, uh, kind of do it yourself, Townsend stands and what they accomplished in the bars that I had bought um, because it definitely reduced resonances going into and up through the floor into your gear. These SMC audio monoblocks are a beast. The transformer is so large that uh, kind of has to do a little top cover here to cover it. He's got to put this back on. Um, he was just replacing the fuses in these. So. Um, the REL25, same one that I own. It's a beast. Mates really well. He's using some... Uh, Townsend Fractal 1, um, these are very, they don't look like much, these Fractal um, Townsend cables, but they're impedance matching cables that are very impressive, at least from a technical standpoint, and work really good with his speakers here. Um, it's one speaker cable, again, I'm not a huge cable guy, but if I ever wanted to try anything other than what I had, it'd probably be these or the Inacoustics. Um, those are Veristar power cables, ribbons, very attractive jacketing. And then showcasing some of his other talents. As I showed in the shorts um, that I recently released, he plays in a band. He's a big fish fan, as you can tell here. That's three panels um, of a picture from a concert. Local guy can make one of these for you if you guys want similar thing done in your room. This is one of his newest guitars. I featured his guitars in the past. He tells me this is actually tiger wood and that is the actual grain of the wood. This is not painted on, it's not artificial. That is amazing. So it's a cool guitar. And then this one he's been eyeing forever and it went on sale, so somebody had one for sale. This is a uh, really cool. He says it plays like butter. It's one of his favorites now. I think I featured some of these other ones in the prior videos. Les Paul. He bought this one in Houston near me. Uh, I love this. You got to actually be in person to appreciate some of this fine details and how beautiful this acoustic guitar is and how it sounds really beautiful Taylor and then I think I've showcased these in the past and also his newest edition came from the Florida audio show this RME um, babyface Really cool how it can do, really works good for musicians that want to play around. Um, go ahead and check out, check out my video from Florida Audio Show RME. Doug's actually playing guitar in that room. One of the most fun rooms at the Florida Audio Show. And so many reviewers and show uh, covers, you know, from these major magazines just totally passed up that room because it, they think it doesn't have audiophile street cred. But this is a very fun piece, high quality, um, something many of you may find attractive. Also over here, he had the best to date uh, headphones set up uh, with Sennheiser HD800s, this um, Modrite Trist tube. He got to choose the custom faceplate color here. Uh, it's a modified Oppo 
that he also got from Mod Right. Separate power supply, separate power supply. I don't see the headphones handy, but uh, yeah, this was a great sounding thing. And until I heard the Blue Hawaii stacks, um, that would this would have been what I would have done as well for headphones. And then over here, a new addition came from the Florida show as well. He's got to uh, set up um, his cameras. The guy's just so busy, he hasn't even uh, had a chance yet. Um, from uh, Charles Camus, his record cleaning um, device. And I think that that covers the main things. I think he had these seats, which have even wine holders, and really, this is cool seating. I think the color combination from our very first video is kind of schizophrenic at first. Now he's got it all uh, coordinated. He's got the Tate's ultrasound racks. He's got a projector that comes down. So, uh, and that was the Mesa Boogie amp there. Um, so yeah, really still evolving system, but he's at near end game for anybody with any kind of reasonable budget or more for in terms of sound wise this room has these acoustic curtains which don't underestimate the value of acoustic curtains over those dinky type of um little square boxes now these are ones from the uh 3ma the company that they carry are very nice really high end and look great um but these acoustic curtains can get you very similar, if not better performance, floor to ceiling. It gives you kind of absorption, diffraction. Um, I've just seen these kind of things work really well in multiple rooms. So aesthetically maybe a little challenging, but don't overlook this from a practical and sound quality benefit. All right, guys, that's an update from here. Um, I'll be back soon. <laughs> Y'all saw this at the Florida show, the baby face.